Good afternoon, Quentin. Well, what a long face. How was Bangor? I loathe these quick trips. Has everything been all right here? If anything is ever all right, I suppose it has been. Don't you know? Good heavens, man, with everything that's been happening, I'd hoped you'd stay around for once. But I'm sorry to disappoint you, Edward. But yesterday I was enjoying the dubious pleasures of the village. I don't understand it, but thank you for trying. Thank you very much. Well, I know exactly what that means. The dubious pleasures of the village indeed. <laughs> You should remember that you're a Collins. I've never been able to forget that, unfortunately. Well, sister. Did you have a pleasant trip, Edward? Abominable. Nothing has happened here, I gather. Well, actually, something has, but I don't know quite how to tell you. Well, it must be good news. Bad news, everyone just blurts out. I'd hoped that dear Gregory would be here by the time you got, both got back, but he's at the school. Where he should be, I might add. I can't understand how Trask has become so important in this family. Dear Gregory, indeed. The fellow's simply a schoolmaster. He's more than that, Edward. He's my husband. <coughs> Your husband? <laughs> Quentin! <laughs> That's very funny. Not in the slightest. <laughs> you married that... that man? Yesterday. You're mad. Edward Collins. But did you expect Edward to have any other reaction, dear sister? Well, now, do I say best wishes to the bride, or is it congratulations? You know, Granny always said that one of them was for the groom, but I could never remember which one it was. So, I shall say both of them to you. Thank you, Quentin. I certainly shall not. Edward, you like Gregory. As my son's tutor, yes. But you admire him, I've heard you say so. That doesn't mean that I want him in the family. You don't want anyone in the family. No one I could bring here, at least. You never wanted me to marry. Frankly, I never thought anyone would have the courage to ask you. Well, Gregory did. And why, do you suppose? Why? For your money. Don't say that. You know... I had completely forgotten how evenly matched you two are. Shall I serve as referee? Don't be vulgar, Quentin. Edward, Gregory's going to be living in this house. I want nothing to interfere with my marriage. Is that quite clear? Meaning, I suppose, that if I don't like it, I can get out? That decision is entirely up to you. You forget, dear sister, that grandmother's will specified that Quentin and I could live here the remainder of our lives. I am aware of that. And if you show Gregory the respect and brotherly affection he deserves, we can happily live here. Marriage has turned her into an optimist, Edward. For once you're right, marriage has changed me. And you don't know what a relief it will be to have someone else take charge. Take charge? Of what? You so certainly don't think I intend to bother myself with business. Judith, grandmother left you the money. I knew that was what was bothering you. And after you, it goes to my son. Of course. Upon my death, Jameson in his 21, the fortune will go to him. But what if you should die before Jameson is 21? Then dear Gregory will administer the estate. He certainly will not. It is all settled, Edward. I've drawn up the paper. And once I reach Evan Hanley, it will be official. And there is not one thing in the world you can do to change it. Edward. He's very persistent, you know. Edward. He never wanted me to be happy. Never. Do you honestly still believe there's such a thing as happiness? I see you do. Well, dear sister, for your wedding present, let me give you a bit of advice. Happiness does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> 